Hi, this is Kim Watson. In this video, I want to go over five facts that you should know about trading floor pivots. Now, they're termed as floor pivots. Some people call them pivot levels. It really doesn't matter. Now, if you're not familiar what pivots are, you can go and look at my blog. I've, underneath this video in the text box, I'll put a link to my blog and you can click on that and it will take you to uh, an article I'd written uh, on pivot levels so it will tell you how they calculated everything you might want to know about pivots so there's an article written on that now um, alternatively or as well as you can come and join me and see how they're actually being used I'm running uh, next uh, Monday through to Friday uh, morning sessions in my trading room from 7.45 through to 10 you can come and join me see how the pivots are being used you can see much more than that of course but um, I'm looking at pivot levels there but I'll also be looking at just other strategies etc so if you want to come and join me again the link will be below this video so if you look down below the video you'll see a link to joining me right okay that's that now so number one about the fact they are static they don't move a lot of period um, indicators move throughout the periods such as a moving average they're moving all of the time it, it, it might appear on a moving average for example that it, the price has hit the moving average when you look back a week or so later or a day later or even a few hours later oh look it just ran into that and you, you, you think oh that moving average is brilliant but what might have happened is the moving average has curled around price and it's just touched it as the as the price has continued moving in one direction it's wrapped itself around price and touched it so it's on the on the chart it's not it never hit at the time there's little gaps so it, the, the, with pivots they're static they're, they're not moving it makes them very easy to test back back test strategies with them and also of course build up good statistical basis and that's what I've been doing over the years and what I'm talking about in these facts so number two fact fact number two they are magnetic what do I mean by this? Well, simply the chances of the main pivot level being hit, the, uh, the level which is the high, low and close of the previous period divided by three, um, that's the pivot level. When that gets, uh, w when you're looking at it, the chances of that being hit ranges somewhere between 75 and 80% on most currencies. So you're, you're looking at a real high probability of the pivot being hit. So it's worth taking that into account. Uh, it may allow you to set targets. It may also stop you from going into a trade too early. If, the, if for example, you're looking to short the market and the pivot's just slightly above, you might just wait until the pivot's hit and t take, take the trade thereafter. So it might just uh, help you in that point. Okay, number three. Some are rarely, rarely touched. <laughs> Uh, very rarely touched. Um, in fact, the chances of the R3 or S3 levels being hit is pretty low. And when I say pretty low, something like 3 to 7%. It depends on the pairing and the trend that that market's been running in over a period. But generally, it, even if we put it at a, a, a sort of outlier of 10%, it's pretty low of being hit over any period. So if you're looking at monthly periods, the chances it runs through in that month is 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 low if you're looking at weekly it's low if you're looking at the daily pivots it's low so if you're setting a target and let's say you're an intraday trader and you're looking for something to be hit and you put setting your your hopes on at some, a price level which is above its r3 just bear in mind you might be holding that trade overnight it doesn't mean say so you don't you you don't take the trade it just means it, it gets the mindset working right and understand that that could be hit the next day Okay, if you're going to use them for levels for targets, they're not going to be hit within the period. That's the main point here. So, as I said, get your mindset sort of set because you know that chances of them actually being hit in that period are less. Okay, the R1 or the S1, when it's hit first. So when the price is hit either the R1 or S1 first, uh, before it's hit the daily pivot, then the chances of the hitting the daily pivot is reduced quite substantially. So what I mean by this, um, to, just to clarify, if let me just run, if that's the daily pivot, and you've got your R1 above here and the S1 below the, the daily pivot, if if price is has already uh, run, uh, come back, run into that, and and is running around that level, the chances of it actually coming back 
uh, to hit that that level there is pretty low and you tend to get this when it's sort of trending in this particular case a downward trend so the chance of it actually hitting its main pivot point um, here is 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 reduced quite significantly okay so number five the r2 and the s2 now i've seen people with strategies out there and they're using them as targets they're suggesting that on the daily basis if it runs through the r1 you target the s r2 or s2 uh, so if it runs through the r1 you're looking at the r2 if it runs through the s1 you're looking at the s2 this might happen better if it hasn't touched the pivot first because the trend is there and it's running with trends so if it's already run through the r1 well the, the chances it will run up to the r2 are slightly better but even with that taken into account over all time it's only got about 20 percent chance of happening on the from the daily period upwards if you're looking at four hourly periods it's much more frequent than that it's, it's almost double that percentage but for the lower lower time uh, sorry the higher time frames from the daily upwards there's, there's there's a lot less chance of them being hit so if you're if you're particularly like a day trader using daily pivots again it get also might just set the mindset saying well look i, I realize that's r2 is not going to be hit today i'm long on this I, I need to let it run for a bit longer so it, it sort of just gets you into the point where that might be tomorrow and it it gives you maybe some patience and some confidence in holding okay that's the the slides I've got here let's just have a look at the charts because uh, nothing better than a chart so here's the euro dollar uh, I've recorded in this on the 9th of March so you see here at the bottom here it's 9th of March I'm not going to move it for uh, any further this way because there's nothing there to see but I will pull it backwards in a moment but the key things here uh, then to see how of course they, they are R's a resistance S is a support uh, and an example yesterday it came in it touched the daily pivot first fine and then up it went hit its R1 um, again it's a number, there's lots of probabilities around all these things happening but um, the important thing is hitting it there today it hit the pivot hit went into that R1 now what you should notice and it's it take into account there are days when the pivots are particularly pinched they're quite close together so if you get a small ranging day like we had yesterday for example the day the, today's pivots look where the R1 and the S1 are they're, they're closer than the previous day was, were to the pivot and even yesterday was pretty rangy because the previous day it didn't it didn't get it didn't even get up to its daily pivot so there you go it hit the s1 first never made it back it tried and i was looking for it to try a lot harder because i was hoping for it to get up there so i could short it um but it never happened so i'm not only using it or sometimes a lot of time years ago i'd only use it as targets I can use it as targets at times other times I'll, I'll wait I'll be patient and particularly in a downward trend like this however that aside um, the, the main point here look how pinched the pivots were on this particular day okay there's key news this Ukraine situation going on as I'm recording this and yep the markets are moving quite strongly but um, here you go it's gone through its S2 S3 and into it I didn't mention the S4s uh, but the stats on the S4s are even less okay so that's where we are um, there so I think I've covered most points on there uh, the pivot being hit regularly uh, he says there's two on a row here where they haven't been hit but it's soon made up for it so if there's two on the row there's probably there, there's probably a whole stack of them that have been hit on previous times sometimes you'll get gaps in the market but they've still been hit look um, but you'll get this occasionally where it comes short of course but it hit the s1 first so we expect that to be coming either short or maybe hitting it but it's got a lower probability of being hit uh, so let's just run through these facts then firstly they're static you can see this in fact here's let's just go up to the end here here's today's from midnight last night the pivots were sitting there and they've been there all the time exactly static number two they're magnetic you see quite a few okay we had two occasions well that's that's the way the markets go we had two occasions in a really bearish market where on a row where they didn't get hit that's the way it goes so but in general 80 75 to 80 percent of the time that pivot is hit number three 
some are rarely touched. If, you've, if we would drag this back and look at it over a much longer period, yep, you got some hit there, but the R3s, S3s uh, are, are rarely touched. Where they are touched, the pivots are normally quite pinched. And I'm going back here, let's just uh, widen things out a little bit so you can see uh, like for like sort of thing. But you can see how you know, S1 hit first here, not touched. We'll uh, come back to that. So number four. Uh, was the R1 or S1 hit first? S1 hit first. <laughs> Didn't make it up to the pivot. Uh, S1 hit first. Actually, it did catch the pivot first, so fibbed. Uh, but you got the point. If the R1 or S1, it's got lesser chance, so it might be that you take that into account when you're trading. Okay, and finally, number five, the R2 and the S2. If you're looking through these, look at how frequently, infrequently even, uh, we're seeing this red flashing light which is the R2 or the S2. Even when it's a day like this where it's, it, they're pinched together it never made it to it. And so if you, if you say, okay, the next day it might come down there, but this is what I said about getting your mindset in place that um, I could be holding this for longer. Am I willing to hold it for longer? Well, that's up to you. Um, and it, obviously Sometimes you should, but it's just that the, that that pivot's disappeared. <laughs> hasn't got the hasn't got the target there. They're not strong targets. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. As I said, if you want to come and see and uh, watch how I'm trading pivots, come and join me uh, next week, Monday through to Friday. Uh, any day you want, or any days you want, come and eat any of them or all of them from 7.45 through, I will send, if you fill the form in below or click on the, the link for the form below, I will send you details or it will, the system will send you details uh, beforehand. So probably you'll get them on Sunday or if you're watching this later next week, you'll get them almost straight away. Right, that's it for me. Have a great, uh, great rest of the day and I will catch you soon.